What up, players? It's Warboss Tamp in his mug. Welcome to my tutorial, part one, for how to paint a high exemplar Krios. He is one of the two special characters that come in the starter set, the starter box for War Machine, and he is the leader of the Protectorate of Menoth. So, or Menoth. So, the colors I'm using are Rackarth Flesh, Menoth Highlight, Sanguine Base, Balthazar Gold. Lead Belcher, Seraphim Sabia, and Celestial Gray. I don't, I don't list that, but there is Celestial Gray as well. So this is how far we're gonna get. I base coated the model in a white primer, thumbs up, and uh, that's when I noticed there were some really bad mold lines on the figure that I had to scrape off before I could really get started. So you might see some some scrape marks there. That's no problem for small scrape marks or where we you know shave off the the flash in the mold most of that is is okay to be um, scraped off and uh, you don't have to reprime or, or anything um, so we're gonna start with Rackarth flesh you could also go with the Menoth white base or the Menoth base color I'm using a two Ott Rosemary and Company Kalinsky sable brush the, these are the uh, brushes that I'm going to be using. The Rosemary and Company brushes are fantastic and they're so good. I've been using them for the past couple of days. I, this is the first video that I'm actually using them in. I've been kind of testing them out on my own and uh, I'd like to do a full review in um, you know in a little while once I get a little bit more experience working with the other brushes but really for most of my work I've I've been working on orcs I've been working on iron hands and I've been working on these videos for the war machine tutorials and they th this brush in particular the two ought has been just unbelievably so good the the quality is really uh, out there and uh, it maintains the tip really really well and the bristles are long enough that I can use them for uh, lining and detail work, like putting eyes on, and um, it it just feels it feels better. I know it's weird when you you have a brush and, or you're used to using a certain type of brush for so long. In uh, my case, Games Workshop brushes and these uh, Rosemary Company brushes are just like a breath of fresh air. So I use Celestia Gray to paint up the robe and. Uh, we're gonna let that dry while we're doing that yep while we're <laughs> while we're letting that dry I, I might have forgotten to put the celestial gray up there I am going to um, move on to the next color which I believe was the Menoth base coat or in this case Rackarth flesh um, to paint these models I I purchased the box of Protectorate of Menoth paints from P3 and you know overall they've been really really good and helpful for me to understand what the colors of the models sh should be but uh, when using Games Workshop equivalents I was uh, just as happy so you can go with either wh whichever one you feel comfortable with I just happen to have the Rackard flesh lying around if I had the Menoth base right next to me I, I might have used that instead but Rackard flesh is going to be the base color for our armor plates and uh, if you haven't seen my tutorials in a while I am including a link in the description of this video to go to the tutorial music page where you can listen to uh, that in the background while you're playing this video at the same time and get some, get some music in or if you prefer to listen to your death metal or 90s gangsta rap then you could do that also I just got back from watching Straight Outta Compton. That's a great movie. So um, I'm using the Privateer Press, um, I guess their 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 store or their 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 page, their website colors that they do on their promotional material. So I'm I'm trying to stick as close to that as possible, but I don't think there's a 360 rotatable view of this guy. So I'm kind of guessing at the colors on his back and uh, stuff that you can't really see straight on like the color of the underside of his his gauntlet on on both of his hands and 
uh, you know, stuff like that. But I, I think I'm going to be pretty accurate to what the privateer press has come out with. And um, I'm, I'm really happy with how fast this model was to paint up. I already finished filming all the clips for the final part of this model. And um, I've been painting, I guess, some, some larger models lately. For example, uh, this and uh, some, some Terminators and Centurions. Or actually, um, not this, but the, the Warjacks and the Man of War Shock Troopers and stuff for, for Privateer Press. So going back to painting a smaller model like this single single character infantry size figure is uh, nice and refreshing and it's, it takes a lot, a lot less time. I think the only thing that takes time with, with a model like this is the detail. Protectorate of Menoth are uh, generally very, very detailed models. They have a lot of intricate uh, filigree and details on their on their armor especially so I want to make sure that I, I I do that justice and so uh, we're, we're gonna be taking a little time painting on especially the red rims of all the armor plates and uh, getting the color colors just right but right now we're just laying down this initial rack hard flesh base coat So especially because I'm using a new brush, but for, for any any work you do with a paintbrush, Balthazar Gold next for the gold details, you always want to make sure you just dip the tip or up to half of the bristles in the paint color that you're using. We really want to avoid getting the paint at the bottom of the bristles where the bristles meet the, the metal. Uh, that's called the ferrule, F-E-R-R-U-L-E. -E. And uh, no, that's not the... Uh, magical kingdom that Link and Zelda come from, but it is where the uh, bristles are held together and where it, how they keep their shape. If you get paint mixed up back there, I know for some of you this might sound like a broken record, but for the people who are beginner painters or haven't seen my videos before, I cannot stress this enough because I don't want you to waste the money on having to buy new brushes all the time like I used to do when I was first painting my orcs and goblins back in Oh, Jeezy Pete's 2009. I kept having to buy new brushes because I was, I kept ruining the points on my old brushes. The the paint would dry in the ferrule. I, I wouldn't even uh, know. Nobody told me, you know, so I would just dip my paintbrush into the pot and it would come out and all be all the way, have paint all the way up to the, you know, halfway up to the metal. And um, I, I, I ruined so many brushes that way. So uh, you don't want to do that. You want to take good care of your brushes. And uh, Lester Bursley has some great videos on brush care and maintenance uh, for regular brushes as well as airbrushes. And as an airbrush beginner, I, I cannot recommend his videos highly enough. There are some other great channels out there. Uh, Chung, the Wargamers Consortium channel, has some really good good beginner intro videos and I'm gonna be making some videos myself and uh, I hope you guys stay tuned for those because those are really coming at it from a very beginner's perspective a lot of it is gonna be opinion because I'm uh, very 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 much a novice when it comes to using an airbrush so uh, you know tips and helpful suggestions you guys can make I'm, I'm always welcoming them and uh, I'm actually being tutored I think is, is a good way to call it by uh, my good friend Howard who is uh, like my mentor in the hobby and he's he's hooked me up with so much great advice and some great products over the years and uh, so definitely check him out if you can Howard Beasley and uh, Tabletop Painting 101 he's got a commission service as well uh, he's a great friend here on YouTube huge help I think yeah, having having YouTube is is a is such a great resource that we we haven't had up until just a couple years ago, and uh, I cannot highly recommend enough getting in contact with and um, interacting with 
someone that you uh, that that you respect and who who you find talented and that you can learn from. So uh, that's I think that's what Google communities are great for. You've got the my community, the Warboss State 2015 painting community. You've got uh, some other great communities out there. Just our community is one of the uh, the greatest I think out there and very supportive. So uh, always work and be inspired by uh, those that you respect. And I am I am sure that if you ask anyone a question that uh, they will they will answer it and try to help you as much as possible. We're all trying to help each other become better artists, you know, and I think that's what I, I love so much about this hobby. Okay, lead belcher next. We're going to paint the silver details on. I'm going to start with the chain here and uh, move on to what else? There's some spikes on him that are in silver. I'm, I'm going with a lot of the uh, back, I guess, uh, the, the rig that he's got on the back, his steampunk kind of backpack is going to be a lot of uh, lead belcher and silver. And um, I think that's a good way to go because it shows that the front of the armor, the bone, the ivory, uh, the, the very holy looking colors, I think are great. Um, it, it's a great front to show the world. And then when you look at him from behind, uh, it's a very, very utilitarian steampunk unadorned, uh, bare silver. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a cool uh, aesthetic. Kind of shows the, the duality of, uh, of of the figure and the character. And, you know, not knowing anything about the War Machine fluff or the, the, the lore and fiction, I think that's just, as an artist, my interpretation of it. And I think as an as artist, you sh should find the the most interesting way to um, paint your models. I always suggest painters who ask me what army should I get or I'm thinking about getting into this game what army should I get there there really is no real answer for that you know the, the best answer is what army do you think looks the best or what army do you want to paint because in the end additions will change rules will come and rules will go and uh, you know I think the dark Eldar mandrakes are like some of the coolest looking sculpts and uh, yet you never see them on the table because the, the rules aren't very good. But yet Eldar wave serpents, which have been around for, you know, decades, all of a sudden they're flying off the shelves because of, of the rules. So the rules will come and the rules will go. But the important thing is to choose something that you enjoy painting. And if you paint up models that you think look great, and they, they're not that good in the game, just put them on the shelf. Put them away for a little while or bring them and play with them anyways. And even if you get creamed, at least you have an awesome looking army. And then one day the the rules development gods will will come out with a with the rule set that really makes your army the best. So uh, never lose hope. Paint what you like and, and uh, everything else will fall into place. So I'm using Sanguine Base next. If you do not have P3 colors and you want a good alternative, I would say Corn Red is a great alternative. Or if you want, you can mix Corn Red with a little bit of Screamer Pink. We will be going into the highlights with Screamer Pink in the next video. Uh, I apologize for the, the focus on my camera. Again, sorry about that. And uh, we're going to be painting the cloth down the front of his outfit here as well as his shoes he's got some ruby slippers which i thought were really interesting when you look at the the photos of the the figure on privateer press's website or or online his uh shoe tips are red it's like dorothy and wizard of oz and then all of the edging on the armor plates is going to be in this red color yeah sanguine base is a nice dark red color to work up from so looks pretty cool yeah and I don't know if it's just because it's a it's a whole different range for me to have to paint but painting war machine has really been a nice refreshing change from all the games workshop stuff it's oh windy 
the doors, <laughs> the wind blew open the door in the garage. Kind of creepy, creaky sound in this, in this house. It's a nice breeze, though. What was I saying? Oh yeah, um, a lot of the let's say war jacks are really nice and clean and simple. Uh, clean meaning that there's you've got lots of big open, open plates and lots of wide surface areas if if you want to do some some highlighting or some detailed freehand work. And then you've got these models that are smaller and very, very detailed, packed with detail, loads of different surfaces and uh, just a lot of fun to paint. With War Machine, I found so far though, especially with these starter, starter figures in the starter set, you uh, really need to go in with your, with your hobby knife and, and get those, get those mold lines off. A lot of them are really tricky too. I found some mold lines on the head of the this spiked ball and chain. There were mold lines going up the the back of his robes that are very hard to get in because they're in between the folds, so it's really hard to get the the point of your hobby knife in. And it's really just kind of a bummer. But um, you know, it's and they're really like next to Games Workshop. There, I think they're the big the big dog in the yard, their figures, their their rule set especially, very, very popular. Every time you hear of tournaments, you hear of, you know, 40k, and then uh, it used to be fantasy, but 40k and now War Machine hordes, so they gotta be doing a bunch of things right for them to be so popular. Okay, here I'm painting the sides of the plates, and um, very easy to miss. So you want to make sure you remember to get those. And you can see he's got like a sash tied around his waist. So uh, you're going to have to reach behind his weapon in order to hit that. On his, uh, what would you call it, van brace? They're not gauntlets. Gauntlets are like gloves, right? The thing that the armor protecting his arms, his forearms. In the back, they've got a strip of red with spikes on it. And in the front, you find with Menoth, a lot of the armor pieces have uh, layered plates. So while most of them are going to be white with red edging, some of them are just purely red with silver accents or gold accents, like the uh, exemplar incinerators that I painted recently. We got a little, little bandit neckerchief there, so we're going to be painting that in sanguine red. Looking pretty good, and then we're going to hit the shoulder pads here. All right, and moving on to the other shoulder pad. I, you might notice some some jumps in the video, and that's usually because if if you look at the model, sometimes I go so fast with the painting that uh, I want to add another layer of of paint to something, or I want to let the paint dry because there's so much that I've freshly painted and a lot of it is still wet. So please um, feel free. If you're painting along with me to pause and uh, if you're looking at your model and you see the undercoat or the the surface coat beneath the one you're painting peeking through or if your model just looks really clumpy and sloppy by all means pause the video and uh, add a second coat or uh, do whatever you need to do because I'm, I'm I usually go pretty fast with my tutorials by the time I get to the highlights I usually find that the shade has really help to tie the colors together and um, bring everything together. So I'm, I'm usually kind of really zipping along and if you need to take the time to repaint something or add another layer to make a smoother transition, definitely, definitely do that. We all just want um, our models to look the best. I want your models to look the best, as, as good as they can be. And um, I highly, highly encourage you to do whatever you need to do to make that happen. 
All right, I'm painting Balthazar gold now onto the, there. there's some strips of gold, I think. Like there's like a gold band holding the, the gauntlet on. So that's that's what that's about. I believe what I'm doing now is taking some Abaddon black and we're gonna paint on the Menoth symbol. Which is pretty cool. It kind of looks like a like an ankh, and like some kind of a hieroglyphic. I don't know, or a stick figure, <laughs> or a stick figure, a uh, crab man with crab claws. So this is a deceptively simple thing to paint. I say deceptive because it, it looks so easy to paint, but then you have to take into consideration the angle that you're painting that black symbol on at. It's very, very easy to um, miss the miss all the all the angles. All right, so we're going to take our Menoth white highlight now, and we're going to highlight up all the Rackarth flesh armor plates. If you're working with GW paints, the uh, equivalent would be Pallid Witch Flesh, or maybe Pallid Witch Flesh with just a little bit of white scar or ceramite white mixed in. It's a very, very light ivory bone color. I'm, okay, so I'm, I know I'm taking my time with this step, trying to work all the angles. I can't seem to find my cork holder thing. I wonder where that went. I've been moving a lot of my um, models to the to the bedroom to work on. Sometimes the lady boss and I will put on a, a movie, and uh, if I'm feeling really like I need to get some work done, I'm feeling antsy and a little bit behind on my commissions. I'll usually bring some stuff into paint in front of the TV while while we're watching. <laughs> like a lot, we watched Aladdin last night. Um, so sometimes I leave my my stuff in in the room at the table there. Okay, this color, even Pallid Witch Flesh, for some reason, any kind of light ivory bone white color is very clumpy and streaky. And if you don't thin it down on your wet palette, it's very easy, if you've got it on the tip of your brush, to put it on the model. And all of a sudden, it creates these streaks where the paint has started to dry and clump. And then when you put it on the model, it leaves these really ugly lines. and a lot of people say I can see my paint strokes when I when I paint. That's usually what that means. The paint itself dries very quickly, so that when you open open the lid, and even if you start to mix it with a little bit of water, the paint is already drying as soon as it hits uh, oxygen hits it. And so when you put it on your brush and you're you're looking at the model and it, you start putting the paint down, it's already started drying on your brush. A lot of people don't don't realize that the paint is always drying. Your paint is always drying and uh, the, the chemical reaction of the, the oxygen hitting it is always causing it to to harden and to dry and uh, so like when we're looking at our model and we're thinking oh where, where are the highlights gonna go what are the angles I'm gonna hit it at we, we forget that we're kind of on a on a timer here and it so it helps when you're thinning down your paints on on a wet palette but uh, no matter what you want to be cognizant of the consistency of your paint as you're working with it. That's something that took me a long time. I'm still learning it. Sometimes I get distracted or I I get like frustrated like why is why is my paint streaking? And I forget it's because it's it's drying and maybe I haven't mixed it as well or maybe it's drying on the paintbrush and I I haven't uh, cleaned my brush in a while so it's already sticking to the bristles and starting to dry. So just uh yeah, the the way we get around that is like I said, use a wet palette, and every once in a while, just clean your brush. Dip it in the water, uh, wash it off, clean it off, get the bristles nice and clean again, and then start using new paint. Um, because if you leave that old paint on and that stuff dries, oh boy, it is it is going to do a number on your brush. And when, when you're using a, a nice high-quality brush like these Rosemary & Company ones, uh, you want to make sure you have them in working order in working condition as for as long as possible look at that he looks great and we haven't even started on the robes I guess you could say we started but we haven't even 
you know, touch the, the amount of shading and highlighting we're going to do with that. But already the, that Minoth highlight bouncing off the red, it, it looks pretty cool. Right, and the back of his gauntlet there I didn't realize was, was going to be in red. So just repainting our Menoth or Sanguine base color. All right, yeah, a lot of what I'm doing now is just kind of cleaning cleaning what I've already done. So sometimes you might see me n not introduce a color and just go in and start painting. And that's usually because I've seen a, uh, a chip in the paint or I've seen an area that isn't smooth looking enough for me. So I'm just going to go back and kind of fix those and hopefully catch them in the narration here. All right, and there is our guy. He looks pretty good. Um, next details, lead belcher. Oh, this is a tricky one. The spikes on his ball and chain there, those are going to be in lead belchers. So, uh, Also, the spikes on his gauntlets are going to be silver. Speaking about color theory, you'll notice that in the, the painted uh, versions of these models, you've got white and you've got silver. Those are uh, very similar close colors to put together. You've got, and you've also got red and gold, which are very similar. So sometimes we, we split it up and we, we make it a little bit more interesting to look at by putting on our gold on our red armor pieces gold uh, or silver details like the spikes on the on the gauntlet or sometimes you'll have a red strip of armor with gold rivets on it so um, when, when we're thinking about what colors we're going to paint different materials if I wasn't following the official privateer press artwork um, and all I knew was that the armor is white plates with red edging and I had to suddenly see all these rivets and spikes and stuff and decide which color metallic I want to paint it. Um, you kind of want to think about, okay, when you're looking at your model from across the table, what's going to pop more? The thing that's going to pop more is a contrast, right? So silver spikes on a red band or gold off of white is really, really striking. Silver off of white is uh, is is still nice to look at, but you, you're going to get more if you see gold off of white and silver off of red and if you look at the ball the the ball and chain the silver off of gold is pretty striking as well so we just find find the the colors and the combinations that that look good to you and just cover up that little blemish on his on his hat there. I think I got a little bit of, of silver paint on it. And how exciting. We're moving into the the most fun of the painting process. The step that I consider the most fun. It is adding washes. So we're going to take Seraphim Sepia and we're going to be painting all of the white armor plates. Try to avoid the Celestra Gray and the red cloth because those are going to be highlighted and shaded with a different color. For all of the white armor plates though, we're we're trying to be consistent. You don't want to you don't want to just drench and drown those armor plates with seraphim sepia. We want to shade it and give it a nice smooth tone to uh, bring it down to this kind of yellowish, brownish, dirty color and then we're going to build the colors back up leaving that kind of tone in the cracks and crevasses. I don't know I, I think it's because the lady boss once heard me say seraphim sepia in another video and she's just cracked up and started laughing 
And so that's that's why we do that now. If you ever hear me say Seraphim Sepia and then you hear my lady boss scream that in the background, that's why. I don't remember what video it was for. If anybody remembers what video that started, I know it's got to be at least two years ago because it was before it was before I moved up to to California with her. But <laughs> Seraphim Sepia. All right, hitting all of the armor plates here. And they're right there in the in the back of his little pope hat, and in the front there. I I love seeing the shade. It's who told somebody in my old hobby shop said when when the shades first came out it was like talent in a bottle because before you had to mix your own glazes and shades a lot of people didn't want to go through the the trouble they thought i'm i'm just going to use whatever products the modeling company has but yeah shades really really do help okay we're going to let this dry and we're going to come back for part 2 and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got the War Machine starter box set, uh, let me know what it's like to, to play the game because um, the, the figures are a lot of fun to paint. You can catch me on Facebook and Twitter at Warboss Tay and join the Google group. Post up your work there and videos and interact with the community there. It's Warboss Tay 2015 Painting Community. Thank you for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for part two. Have a great day.